Without further ado, Mayor Kyle Moore. Now, I would be remiss, since Jared didn't do this, here, uh, you see we have the March Madness Stag, March 16th. This is Exchange Club only event for all the guests. But I saw in here an interesting way to raise revenue, and I think you might want to pass this on to Governor Rauner uh, for the state of Illinois. You are going to raffle Rich Howe's Christmas sweater. I'm, th I'm thinking that may solve our budget woes in the state of Illinois. Last moment joke, what can I say? <laughs> All right, I want to thank the Quincy Exchange Club and the Eagle's Nest for hosting this year's State of the City. This year marks my seventh year involved in the city government, four as an alderman, and as Joel said, in just a few short months, it'll be my third year serving as mayor. I can tell you that I leave work every day inspired by the work of so many in the city of Quincy. You know, many believe it is the mayor that implements change in the city, but it would not happen without the support of the Quincy City Council. We have a number of members that are here today, and if you are a member of the Quincy City Council, please stand so we can say thank you for being a voice for your constituents. Alderman. <laughs> See where Jenny Hayden's at. Okay, she, City Clerk Jenny Hayden has the best seat in the house today. <laughs> um, I'd also like to recognize uh, City Treasurer Peggy Cram and City, uh, City Clerk Jenny Hayden, both of whom uh, serve the city with so much poise and confidence. If we could say thank you for their service to the city. <laughs> I'd like to recognize Director of Administrative Services, Glenda Hackamack, and all of our team of directors who are there in the back uh, who serve the city of Quincy. Quincy is blessed to have the very brightest leaders of our city serving on their behalf. And lastly, I also want to say thank you to city employees, to all who work to keep us safe, who work a chainsaw in 90 degree weather, who provide clean drinking water, who drive residents to their jobs and medical appointments, and to those who work behind the scenes and often go unnoticed. You are the heartbeat of our city, and I'm so impressed with your hard work and dedication every single day. On behalf of the citizens of Quincy, I want to say thank you to the elected officials, department heads, and employees who are here today who do so much to make sure city government continues to be seamless in our everyday lives. Please join me in thanking them for their efforts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests and fellow exchangeites, it is an honor to submit to you today the state of our great city. My first State of the City address focused on the dawning of new leadership in our city. From our city of Quincy to Gretaf to the school board, 2013 ushered in a new generation of leadership ready to implement their vision for the city of Quincy. Last year, we spoke of our city building new schools, installing next generation fiber optic in infrastructure to homes, and a city filled with industry investing millions of dollars into our economy. 2014 will always be remembered for vision and leadership in action. I believe when the story of 2015 is told, it will be a story of a community that united together to pave the way for a more prosperous future. Each and every one of us knows the inherent value of living in the city of Quincy. We know what the snow-covered trees look like on Main Street when we drive down in December. We feel the twinge in our hearts when we see our childhood homes. And we recognize the smile on our faces of our friends when we see them at the grocery store. But now, more than ever, it is important that we be able to tell that story to a wider audience, to rally around a common vision to help us retain and attract the best and brightest talent to Quincy. With that in mind, this year, Quincy and Adams County joined together to launch a new branding initiative for our region. Nine agencies combine their treasure and talent to engage over 2,500 residents in the direction of our community. Part of the engagement was an online survey filled out by over 2,200 residents. The results of the survey are, survey are clear. Our residents see Quincy as a great place to raise a family, a city filled with renowned arts and culture, and a people who support one another in time of need. Just last month, we launched our brand, Quincy, right on cue, that not only speaks to our heritage, but lets, people, but lets people know if you need a night out in the town, a place to close a deal, or simply a helping hand, Quincy will be there for you right 
on cue. Our brand will help market Quincy to industries looking to expand, but we all know, know that we cannot grow our economy without buy-in from existing businesses. Thanks to their commitment, our, our economy continues to expand and flourish. Homegrown companies like Quincy Recycle have steadily grown over the past few years. Their subsidiary, Quincy Farm Products, will soon be expanding their operations into the vacant Quincy Compressor Building. Success stories are numerous in our cities. This, city, this year, Fibro Animal Health expanded into the former United States Postal Sorting Facility. Lehigh Fluid Power purchased Ortman Fluid Power invested nearly a half of a million dollars into updating their space in the Quincy Development Center and retained and created over two dozen jobs. New construction projects continue to reshape our landscape. Dick's Sporting Goods, Golden Corral, the Salvation Army Thrift Store, People's Prosperity Bank, all are finishing or have completed projects within the year. In total, Quincy had 77 more construction projects in 2015 than the year before with a total value of over $40 million, an increase of $800,000. The evidence of our growing economy is not just investments in our building, but in a, the number of people employed in our community. Did you know that in December of 2015, there were 330 more people employed in our city than at the same time in 2013? We know that government does not create private sector jobs, but we can be a catalyst to give industry an environment of abundant resources and talent. The Adams County Enterprise Zone is one tool we have to give incentives to businesses that expand or relocate in our region. This year, our zone was renewed and a new incentive was adopted. The incentive rewards a business if they help recruit one of their suppliers or customers into our city. We can also work with industry to help build and retain a talented workforce. This year, I launched the Quincy Promise. This initiative assists and encourages local students to go into workforce training programs which lead to in-demand careers in our region and also serves to retain Quincy's greatest natural resource, the mind and potential of our youth. Thanks to the work of John Wood Community College, Gretif, the Community Foundation, and our area high schools, the program has little overhead cost and to date, Area businesses and philanthropists have pledged $250,000 over a four-year period to launch the program. Each student that earns a scholarship will stay in Quincy, be connected with local employers, all with no college debt. Quincy University also launched a unique, a unique program to encourage high school students to continue their education in Quincy. The QU Trust Scholarship Programs gives Quincy students the ability to earn micro scholarships during their high school academic career. Your student can earn up to $40,000 in scholarships for activities such as perfect attendance, volunteering in the community, participating in extracurricular activities, and for earning good grades. With programs like the Quincy Promise and the QU Trust Scholarship, Quincy has taken a bold step forward to educating and retaining our future workforce. One cannot tell the story of 2015 without reliving one of the most devastating storms in our city's history. On Monday, July 13th, Quincy took the brunt of a devastating windstorm. In just a few minutes, 70 mile an hour straight line winds caused 34,000 area residents to be without power. 90% of our city streets were impassable due to fallen trees and live power lines, and thousands of residents faced unprecedented property damage. Almost as if right on cue, the community knew what to do and sprung into action. As I drove to the EOC Center a few minutes after the storm, I could already see neighbors helping neighbors. Amron began calling in resources within just a few minutes and would end up sending over 1,400 resources to help with the recovery. One department in Amron alone logged over 10,000 hours during the restoration efforts. And in four short days, Amron had power restored to all but 300 residents. The Quincy Park District faced their own devastating losses, but dedicated weeks of their manpower working side-by-side -side city crews to help clear debris. The winds were not partial in their destructions, and hundreds of homes and buildings were also damaged in our city. After the storm cleared, the Emergency Operations Center had 267 requests for assistance from the elderly and the disabled. Together with the EOC, we sent a call to action to area businesses and churches to help fellow neighbors. 
249 individuals answered that call and donated close to 2,300 hours of their time for the community debris cleanup efforts. And these numbers do not include large groups such as the Church of Latter-day Saints. And while many were focused on the cleanup efforts, one group focused on restoring the canopy to the, in the Quincy Park District and on the city of Quincy right away. Since launching their campaign this summer, Trees for Tomorrow has collected over $150,000 in donations, planted 250 trees, and plans on planting just as many next year. While the total cost of the $1.7 million storm was truly devastating to our city government, Quincy can be proud of the fact that no lives were lost, only a few injuries were reported, no one became sick due to foodborne illness, and within a short amount of time, life was not only restored to normal for most, but the campaign to reclaim our treescape was already well underway. You know, it is impossible to thank all of the agencies and individuals who lent a helping hand, but today I am joined by John Simon from Adams County Emergency Management, Carl Fisher from Ameren, Rome Frerich from the Quincy Park District, I don't see him here, but Tom Van Ness was going to be here with the Trees for Tomorrow. If you could, please join me in thanking them and all of the thousands of people who worked hard during this very trying time in our city's history. The days after the storm reminded many of government's most important responsibilities to keep our citizens safe, and to provide aid to those who are in need. But I believe that city government also works best when we listen, when we invest in your money, your money wisely, and when we do so with a common goal to make life better for future generations. Quincy's downtown continues to be the blueprint for implementing a strategic vision to spur growth. The branding survey asked residents if an investment could be made in downtown Quincy, what would they prefer? 40% of those respondents would want to invest in renovating dilapidated buildings, and 16% would like to see investments made to bring market rate apartments downtown. Almost as if right on cue, the Quincy or the district partnered with the city of Quincy for a downtown rental rehab program, which encourages investments in market rate apartments through renovating historic buildings. This year, the program is working with four landlords to bring 13 market rate apartments downtown and the $167,000 investment by the city will leverage itself to not only renovate aging buildings, but increase their taxable value by over $500,000. The spending power of alone of those renters is estimated to bring an additional $195,000 in retail spending to the district. The downtown rental rehab program addresses the need within the community, increases safety in our downtown, enhances the quality of life in the community, and invests your tax dollars wisely. It truly is a win-win. The success of the district proves that when citizens and elected officials are engaged in collaborative efforts to solve problems, nothing is impossible. Last year, our nation experienced a rise in violent crime and, and unfortunately, Quincy was not immune. Today in the world of 24 hour news cycles and social media, a pic one could paint a picture of an unsafe community where violent crimes could happen to anyone. But the statistics say something vastly different. Close to 70% of the victims of violent crimes in Quincy last year knew their perpetrator. And the largest cause of violent crime was not gang related, but due to the use of drugs and alcohol. Bottom line, if we want to reduce violence in our city, we must reduce dependency on drugs and alcohol. We will need the help of families, social service agencies, churches, and all level of law enforcement agencies to help solve this problem. Chief Copley and I are working together to begin an anti-drug program that will engage at-risk youth, will target high-risk offenders to give them a path to be productive citizens, and to work with law enforcement agencies to take a tough stand when, when it's needed. We are working to roll out this program in the upcoming months, and if you are interested in being part of the solution, please let one of us know. You know, every year has its own set of unique challenges, but in order for a city to be able to solve problems of the day, to invest in opportunities of tomorrow, we cannot be paying for problems of the past. During my first two State of the City addresses, I spoke to you about the need for structural reforms to our city finances. 
a city with a fiscal policy of overspending revenues and depleting reserves is not just one disaster away from a crisis, but it also lacks the financial strength to invest in its future. When I took office, we had a $1.7 million structural deficit in our budget. Expenses were growing at a rapid rate, and at the end of the year, we forecasted to only have $1.2 million in general fund reserves. Think for a moment what the state of our finances could have been after the $1.7 million July storm had we only had $1.2 million in reserves. But the city council chose to embrace a different path. They adopted policies such as a five-year comprehensive infrastructure plan, a five-year strategic budget, a general fund reserve policy, and each year slowly increased our reserves. Their actions not only led to enough reserves to absorb the cost of a once-in-a-generation storm, but also led to a bond rating upgrade this year by Standards & Poor's. The City Council also worked with my administration to tackle the rising cost of health and workers' compensation insurance. To give you an idea, in 2014, our five-year cost for health insurance grew at a rate of 8.5%, and our workers' compensation expense grew at a staggering 16% per year. The Council began by exploring innovative ideas to lower health care costs. Last year was the first year of our partnership with Quincy Medical Group for the City of Quincy Clinic. The clinic provides checkups, physicals, walk-in treatments, and other medical services at no out-of-pocket cost to our employees. In the City Clinic's first full year, the city saved over $200,000 worth of expenses that would have been billed to our health insurance and workers' comp compensation providers. Last year, the council made the difficult decision to switch our health insurance providers to Blue Cross and Blue Shield. That decision not only saved us from an increase of $650,000 to last year's budget, but I am pleased to announce today that next year, we will have a $400,000 reduction in our health insurance expense, the first decrease in over 10 years. Mitigating our rising workers' compensation expense was also an important goal for the council and administration. Our strategy was to, educate, uh, was to increase education to our employees, utilize the employee clinic, implement new safety measures. Due to those factors and a reduction in claims, the city will save over $400,000 in next year's budget in workers' compensation expense. That is a total of eight hundred thousand dollars in real savings to our upcoming budget because the council chose to break away from the status quo and address rising expenses my fellow citizens you should expect your city government to provide the services you want while living within our means over the last three years the city council department heads and employees have all worked hard to accomplish this goal and it is my honor to announce to you today that in april we will propose the first balanced budget since April of 1999. Can anyone take a guess what I was doing in April of 1999? <laughs> Praying to God that I would find a date for prom and that I'd graduate high school. <laughs> One of those prayers was, were answered. <laughs> a balanced budget with healthy reserves offers us the opportunity to modernize our operations and to lay the groundwork for generations of prosperity. Last year, I asked voters to join me in supporting the county's referendum to build a new jail. The county did an excellent job of educating the vote voters on the wretched conditions of the jail and the efficiencies that could be gained if a new jail were to be built. Thanks to the 67% of voters who agreed, the county now has a unique opportunity to invest in a new jail and find efficiencies with other agencies. With that in mind, the city continues to work with the county to explore a downtown site for the jail that would include a new home for our Quincy Police Department. I want to be clear that I support working together on this project, but the project must make sense for the city, it must make sense for the county, and altogether, we need to be mindful of spending your tax dollars wisely. But the city of Quincy and Adams County continue to work together to look at other avenues to gain efficiencies between our two governments. Last year, Adams County learned that they would have to find a new home uh, for the Adams County Ambulance Service. Upon hearing this news, Chief Hitting and I reached out to the county to offer our assistance. We believe it makes sense to have the ambulance service co-locate co in our fire stations. 
for the county, they could possibly achieve a faster response times for ambulances by adopting a station model similar to the Quincy Fire Department. Moving into already existing stations would also offer a low cost option for the county and save a considerable amount of money in comparison to building a new building. The proposal also makes sense for the city. First, Quincy firefighters respond to an average of 2,000 EMS calls a year. One can imagine the number of calls will be reduced, freeing the firefighters uh, to respond to other duties of the day. Second, although Quincy has had a female firefighter before, our current stations do not allow for the safe housing of any potential female firefighters. Since the ambulance service has female employees, we would retrofit our stations to accommodate their need, thus taking care of an expense that we will surely have in the future. Now, Quincy is a city that is building new schools, building a new jail. Our businesses are expanding, our downtown is thriving, and our citizens are engaged like never before. We are at a time and a place in our history that will have a significant impact in our city's future. This is not a moment to take our foot off the gas pedal. It is a moment to embrace a clear direction for our future and push forward. What is, what is inspiring to me is that so many young professionals are active in our community. Did you know the highest level of respondents to the branding survey were from residents between the ages of 24 to 34? The survey proved that our most engaged citizens are just beginning their civic careers. It reminds me of another moment in time when 20 years ago, our city fathers hired Tescan Associates for a blueprint to revitalize Quincy's central business district. The blueprint implemented a bold vision for our community centered on economic vitality, sense of place, spirit of community, and neighborhood integrity. It is time for us once again to chart our own course. In 2040, Quincy can have a riverfront that is the talk of the Midwest. It can lead the nation in startup companies, be the premier destination for educational opportunities. Whatever destiny we choose, we need the vision and the roadmap to get us there. This year, the city hopes to lead an effort and keep the momentum going with our partners from the Branding Initiative to launch a new strategic plan that will bring the community together to envision the next 20 years of prosperity. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, it is an honor to be the mayor of the city of Quincy during such an exciting time in our city's history. This year, our community was tried and we were tested, but we proved that working together as one, there's no obstacle too big, no storm too mighty, and that our best days are truly yet to come. Thank you for having me and may God bless our great city. Any questions? You know, at this time, there's there's not plans for that, but they're like I said, we're working with uh, you know the ambulance to find home for uh, you know find a home for them if they want to co-locate. Uh, but I think it's important to know that um, we have to look at we have to look at what our, our city has faced in the past, and that is a drastic rise in expenses, and, and, and look at how other cities have dealt with that. And one of the conversations that, that I've had um, in the community and with the chief is that I believe that we can, we can properly locate stations and achieve the same amount of response time. So for an example, um, we have not built a new station since uh, 1976. Imagine or think about how far the Quincy, city of Quincy has grown to our north, to our east, and to our south since 1976. Um, we do have in next year's budget, or we'll have a, a line item to begin looking at, uh, you know, where we can properly build our fire stations. And that's something that we've looked at behind the scenes and we'll continue to look at. Yes, sir. Have we, have we or when will we know how many uh, young people are taking advantage of the first year of the Quincy problem? Well, that's a good question. So the question was, how many young people uh, will we learn, or when will we learn how many young people are taking advantage of the Quincy Promise? Uh, I had a meeting yesterday, and uh, we had uh, 76 applicants. Uh, so that's a good number, but we're working right now with the schools and John Wood to uh, verify eligibility and also, um, you know, decide how, you know, how many scholarships we can award versus uh, how much money we have in the bank. But we'll probably know, I would say, April or May, uh, how, many, how many students we're able to award scholarships for. But we had a great turn. We had a great turnout for that. Any other questions? 
All right, thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. On behalf of the Quincy Exchange Club, we'd like to thank our fellow member and the mayor of our city for his address today. Thank you all. Have a nice weekend.